Hey there, fellow maker, Bill here. And today we're gonna talk a little bit more about stencils. In the previous video, I did some of these machine cut stencils. These are off of my vinyl cutter. You can get good vinyl cutters pretty cheap now, like the uh, Silhouette Cameo and all of those guys. But if you don't have one of these, you might have a 3D printer. In fact, I suspect that more people own 3D printers now than vinyl cutters. So today I'm gonna to show you how I made some stencils on my 3D printer. To kick things off, let's head on over to the computer. I'll show you how these were made. This is Inkscape, and this is the vector file that I've drawn for my Phalanx stencils. These are just lines. There's this uh, pen tool here. You can just draw some lines like that, and that's a path. And uh, that's what we can use to extrude our stencil in a 3D program. If you want to do text, you can type out text with the text tool. Just know that this is not a path, the same way that this is a path. This is important for um, things like a, a vinyl cutter or a laser cutter. Uh, what I like to do is to type out whatever I'm gonna make into a path and just go to uh, path combine. And that is no longer text. Now, if I double click on this, there you go, you can see it is a path. If I change the fill to nothing and the stroke to something, you can see there's an outline there. So that's how you make the path. Uh, we'll save this file out as an SVG file and we'll send it over to Fusion 360 to make the 3D model to print as a stencil. I have a new file started over here in Fusion. We can insert an SVG and you pick the plane. So I'm gonna pick the bottom plane there then go find my file. This is my decal file that I was just making in Inkscape. I can open it, decide where I want to place it, and I'm just gonna put it in the middle-ish. Now I've already made sure that this is scaled the right size for my gun, so this should be uh, appropriate. I'm gonna hit OK. And now I have essentially a sketch, and I can use this to extrude my stencils. I'm gonna start by drawing another sketch, uh, again on this plane here, and we will do just a rectangle, kinda like this, and I am purposely lining it up with this edge, then I'll stop the sketch, and now I can extrude these areas. So this one here, I'll right click and go extrude, and this is gonna be the thickness of our stencil. Now I'm gonna 3D print it, in let's say let's say two or three layers so if i'm going to do a layer thickness of 0.2 millimeters and i make this 0.4 millimeters my math <laughs> says that means it'll be two layers worth of 3d printing filament um so let's give that a try let me bring my sketch back there um do the other one extrude 0.4 millimeters like so. So now I have two 3D files that I should be able to 3D print as stencils. I'm going to make 3D print, click on one of my stencil pieces there. So I'll just save this out as an STL file. Let's say M5 left stencil. I'm going to print this on the i3 Mark III that I'm borrowing from Joel, the 3D printing nerd. So I've got Slicer open and I will import my file. Looks like I need to rotate this, so I'll rotate it. Let's go with the x-axis, 90 degrees. Boop. That looks good. And it's lying flat on my thing. I can go to some of my print settings. I don't want a brim. So we go to skirt and brim. Um, I don't want a brim. Okay, no brim, zero. And view the layers. Whoops, preview. View the preview. It will be two <laughs> layers, one, and two, and that looks pretty good. Uh, so I guess I will get to printing.
Those files are printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. That's the machine I put together with my buddy Joel, the 3D printing nerd. It did take a couple of tries and a couple of different settings to get it right, but I think I've got it nailed. I designed my piece to be 0.4 millimeters thin, and I printed it at 0.2 millimeter layer height, so this is two layers of ABS plastic. Although I believe this will probably work just fine with PLA or probably any other material. You can see though that there are gaps in my two layers. That won't do at all, paint will go right through there. So what I did to fix it on my upgraded piece here, totally obscures the light, you can see there are no gaps. This is 0.6 millimeters thick and three layers, so it's 0.2 millimeter layer height. I also upped the extrusion multiplier to 1.25, I think. Your results may vary, you may have to tinker a little bit, but this seems pretty good. Here's the final printed part, really flexible, should work just fine. So the next thing I need to do is figure out how to stick this down to my part. I've got this stuff here that is a sprayable adhesive that uh, claims to be repositionable. So hopefully I'll spray it on here, let it dry for a little bit and I'll be able to tack it down just like masking tape. I also want to make sure that I spray it on the back of my stencil, obviously. Not too much. I think now I just let it dry. I'm gonna read the directions on the back here. This stuff claims to be dry to the touch in three hours. I've given my stencil tacky stuff here about an hour to dry, I think. I don't think I needed to wait that long, but let's see how well it sticks down. That seems fairly well secured there. And I can still peel it up. That looks good. So I think I will try and paint this. I've gone and masked off the rest of the gun and I'm actually gonna hit everything with a white paint first. Got my airbrush all loaded up here. The white should sneak under the stencil wherever there may be gaps. I'm hoping that'll fill those gaps and then my colors won't bleed through. Cool, now I can swap out my white for this blue and do the next color. I have some blue loaded up in my brush and I'm gonna do the next layer of paint. Last layer of paint is black just on that five there, so I'll mask the rest of this off. Everything's protected. Time to blast that five with some black. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Time to peel this all off and see how we did with our 3D printed stencil. Whoa, this doesn't look quite as clean as the results from my machine cut vinyl stencil here, but it is pretty good. You can see I think basically if this surface isn't very flat, if there's any inconsistencies, the plastic may bow a little bit. It's not gonna lay down perfectly flat. This isn't as flexible as the thin vinyl, but it's pretty good. There's a little bit of a soft edge right there. I could have masked that off with some tape just to make sure, but something about this surface made this part here bow up a little bit and let some feathering spray under that. But I do think with some tinkering and perhaps if you could print this in just one layer on your 3D printer, you might get even better results. Of course, this side isn't weathered yet, but I'll show you the other side by comparison. This is the result that I got with the vinyl cut stencils. Super, super clean, almost perfect. But again, this looks pretty great. 
And if all you have is a 3D printer, <laughs> all you have is a 3D printer. If you have a 3D printer and you don't have a vinyl cutter, this is definitely a viable option to get some really nice looking stencils. Well, there you go. A really great alternative for doing stencils for your prop and costume making work with your 3D printer. I hope you enjoyed this technique. I hope you give it a go. If you do try it out and learn anything, I'd be happy if you shared it with me. Let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions about my experience here, let me know in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. That's all I've got for you today. Of course, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got prop and costume making videos coming up every single week. If you got a project you're working on, you want to share it with me, let me know over on Twitter. I'm at Chinbeard. Other than that, thank you so much for watching today, and I'll catch you in the next build. Thank you.